Virtual Desktop has a suite of very powerful tools that, if used correctly, can boost your PC's VR performance significantly and make it seem like you got a GPU upgrade for free. In my test, I managed to reduce my GPU load by up to 50%. I'll say that again. I reduced the load on my GPU by 50% and I'll show you how I did it. So this video is split into four parts. Firstly, I'll go through the in headset streaming tab and all the settings that I use. Then I'll talk about the PC streamer app, which has the most important and powerful tool that virtual desktop has. And it's a bit hidden away just for fun. Once we've spoken about that, I'll show you the test with lots of examples of how these settings can affect your games with statistics and graphs for all you nerds out there, me included. Plus, I'll show you my sweet spot, the point in the settings for my PC that seems to extract the most possible performance without setting your house on fire. Then my final conclusion. I have broken this video down into chapters, so if you want to jump ahead to the part of the video that interests you the most, please feel free. Ready? Let's get straight into it then. <coughs> this is Big Bertha, my RTX 4080 equipped PC with a 12th gen i9 and 32 gig of Kingston Fury DDR5 RAM running at 6,000 megahertz via an XMP tweak. Not the most cutting edge PC, but no slouch in the performance department either. I will be running all the games at their highest graphics to really swamp the GPU on purpose, then use Virtual Desktop's toolset to reduce the load by up to 50% in some cases and get a nice stable frame rate. For the test, I will be using the Virtual Desktop app installed on my Play for Dream MR with its insane 4K per eye micro OLED screens to further push poor old Big Bertha along. Unlike Steam Link and Meta's own Air Link, Virtual Desktop is a paid for app. It currently costs £18.99 in the UK, but is great value as I've had thousands of hours of use out of it. So if you are purchasing for a Meta device, please use my official affiliate link in the description below for 10% off the price. Thanks. Streamer tab. First of all, this is not a virtual desktop setup tutorial. I am assuming you've used virtual desktop before, but if you haven't, please go check out this video here, then come back once you are up and running. Now, open Virtual Desktop in your headset and click on the Streamer tab. This is where all the essential settings are. You can copy all my settings here, but you must pick the VR graphics quality to match your GPU. At full 4K resolution, the Play for Dream MR can only go as high as 80 frames per second. But if you're running a Quest or a Pico headset, for example, you can go higher. It's up to you. I have not got SSW running currently, but we will get back to this setting later. So make sure to stay tuned for that exciting little tidbit. PC Streamer app. Let's head on over to your PC now and open the Streamer app. There are several tabs, but the only two we are interested in are Options and Advanced. Options tab first, and here we have Codex. Now, I've done a whole video just on this subject alone, and I would advise you to pick the one that you are most comfortable with. I prefer HEVC 10-bit. That's my choice. Next, we have adaptive quantization and two-pass encoding. These two work together to reduce compression artifacts, which is a long-standing bugbear of wireless VR enthusiasts. I would recommend you tick both, but if your GPU is really struggling, two-pass encoding does eat into your performance a bit, so consider turning this off in that case. Virtual Desktop has its own OpenXR runtime called VDXR which can reduce the strain on your PC as it bypasses SteamVR completely. But for this test, I wanted to use the FPS VR overlays to demonstrate the performance. So I have selected SteamVR. Just copy my settings on the right. If you're an advanced user, which I guess you are as you're watching this, you can leave automatically adjust bitrate unchecked and change it in headset on the streamer tab. Again, that is your choice. Advanced tab next, and this is where the secret source hidden away. The virtual desktop field of view tangent sliders are without doubt the most powerful tool 
currently available. They have the biggest effect on your GPU performance, but can also look horrible if you get it wrong. So we'll cover how best to use them in the test section. So what is a field of view tangent slider? Well, basically they are performance enhancing tools that crop the edges of the rendered image to reduce the number of pixels your GPU needs to process. Looked like I was dancing there. By, by adjusting these sliders, you can improve frame rates by decreasing the rendered field of view horizontally and vertically, though over adjustment can lead to noticeable black bars or distortion. VDXR render resolution is basically the same as SteamVR's per eye render resolution, but this tab is only used if you are using VDXR as the OpenXR runtime. My recommendation is just leave it at 100% and use the in-headset VR graphics quality setting in the streamer tab to change the resolution instead. Next up, we have a new setting which arrived with the version 1.34.10 update. Contrast adaptive sharpening helps to reduce blurriness introduced by the encoding and decoding process. And I will talk about this later during my test. So that's it for now. Let's move on to the actual test, followed by my conclusion, where I will reveal my sweet spot just for you. So make sure to stay till the end for that. The test. There are four games featured in this test. EAWRC because it runs horribly in VR. Damn you, Unreal Engine 5. Half-Life Alex because I still think this game hasn't been surpassed for visual detail. Star Wars Squadrons for some space combat. And finally, Le Mans Ultimate because outside of Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think it's one of the most demanding games to play in VR. All graphics settings in all games are set to their highest ultra defaults for maximum impact. Now, the bulk of the testing was done using Le Mans Ultimate because I could replicate the exact scenario almost every time when starting a race. So firstly, I have the field of view tangent sliders on 100%. And as you can see, the GPU load is almost maxed out at 96%. VRAM usage is at 15.3 or 15.7 available. Frame rate is hovering around 55 FPS at the start of the race. And there are a lot of amber and red warnings on the FPS VR overlay. Next up, I've reduced the horizontal tangent slider to 85% and the vertical tangent slider to 75% and you will immediately notice that the GPU load has dropped to 90% and the frame rate has jumped up almost 10 FPS, but those amber and red warnings have persisted. I then dropped the horizontal to 70% and the vertical to 50%. Again, you can see a significant drop in the GPU load to 74% and though the frame rate has improved, it is not by much, though it does recover a lot quicker as the field of cars thins out, so that by the second lap of the race, the FPS has climbed up to a more usable 78. Also at this point, I started to get marginal black bars on the horizontal axis and noticeable black bars on the vertical axis. So, how far can we actually take it? Just for absolute clarity, in this next test, I dropped the horizontal and vertical sliders to the minimum allowed, which is 40% on both axes. GPU load drops to around 60%, but again, not much improvement in FPS at the start, though it jumps up above 70 FPS by the first corner, and then we quickly hit a steady 80 FPS less than halfway through the lap. A significant increase in performance as we reduced both to the absolute minimum allowed. But now the black bars are significant in both the horizontal and vertical axes in the headset. Before I show you my sweet spot, <laughs> these videos take a lot of work. So if you've enjoyed and gained any insight, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. Then consider subscribing and joining my channel membership for extra perks. Thanks my sweet spot. After a lot of testing and fiddling, I found the sweet spot between maximizing performance, minimizing the intrusive black bars, then using virtual desktops, other tools to get that steady frame rate on ultra graphics for my PC. I set my horizontal tangent slider to 70% and the vertical tangent slider to 65%. This gave the best performance and the black bars were hardly noticeable to me. If you are sensitive to these settings, then gradually increase both axes individually till you are comfortable. However, every time you change a slider, you will have to restart SteamVR. And if it all goes Pete Tong, 
and your screen looks terrible, hit the reset to default button and start again. I use the contrast adaptive sharpening at 100% to sharpen up the encoding decoding blurriness. This is subjective and really hard to capture on video, but I think it improved the visual quality overall. Oh, and with contrast adaptive sharpening, this isn't on. <laughs> you actually have to tick the box before you can move the slider for it to have any effect. I then used synchronous space warp for Le Mans Ultimate and EAWRC to boost the frame rate. I don't mind this setting for racing games, but found it isn't so good for more dynamic, faster paced games where you move your head around a lot. So I had it switched off for Star Wars Squadrons and Half-Life Alex. The conclusion. The inclusion of the field of view tangent sliders in virtual desktops toolset gives a significant boost, like a generational jump in GPU performance for a very small investment. But as with all things, there is a trade-off. As you can see in the example running now, my GPU load dropped from nearly maxed out at 96% to less than 50% with just a few simple tweaks. Finding the best settings for you will take a bit of trial and error, so use my settings as a base, then tweak them for your own particular circumstances. They are not set in stone. These work for me, but you may have to make changes. And like I said earlier, if it all goes wrong, just reset to default and start again. Well, this video took a lot of work and I hope you've enjoyed it and got some value from the settings. As always though, what do you think? Have you seen a significant increase in performance using my settings? Did you find the black bars intrusive or are you running an RTX 5090 and just bulldoze games into submission? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Keyboard Warrior Corner. Every time I make one of these videos, I get a load of keyboard heroes pointing out all the things wrong with my video. You cheated, that bit is wrong, virtual desktop sucks. Well, actually you suck. Or more specifically, your Wi-Fi sucks because if you have problems with virtual desktop, I can guarantee almost 99% of it will be down to poor Wi-Fi. Now, I've made a load of videos on this subject, so go and have a look. No links, just go look, because if you can't be asked to help yourself, then I'm not going to. Rant over. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.